Anyone who wants a career in music needs to know how to get paid. That might sound like a stupid statement, but it's something that the vast majority of music creators, new or established, do not understand, as it's complicated. My name is Niklas Molinder, I'm from Sweden. I'm a songwriter and music producer. I've been doing that for more than 20 years, so I envy you. I wish I could be part of this because I've done this so many times and it's amazing. <laughs> I'm also co-founder of Session, alongside Björn Alvea Sovaba and Max Martin. Session is a company on a mission to get every music creator the fair credit and reward they deserve. Unfortunately, the administrative part is quite difficult and complicated, but crucial to understand if you want to be credited and paid for the music you create. If you give me five minutes of your time, I can give you the basic knowledge you need to understand how to make sure that you get paid for what you do. To ensure that everyone involved in the music creation gets paid, it's important to understand the underlying music rights and how the music industry identifies everyone involved. To explain how the music industry identifies people involved in the creation and production of a song, I will use a famous example, one of the most successful pop songs ever, Dancing Queen by ABBA. Björn, completely by coincidence, is my co-founder at Session. As creators and consumers, this is what we hear, the song. But what we hear right now is actually divided into two different parts, the musical work and the recording. Depending on what a creator's role or contribution is, they will be attributed to one side or sometimes both. It's so important that you as a creator understand what side you belong to. Let's start with the musical work. A musical work is what the songwriters are creating. It can be done in so many different ways, together in a studio, remotely, or on a track from a producer. But from a rights perspective, a musical work is nothing you can listen to. It's the documentation of the title, melody, lyrics, songwriters, and their publishers. Some songwriters don't have a publisher, and they are what's called self-published. With Dancing Queen, the songwriters are Björn, Benny, and their manager Stieg, and they're all published by Universal Music Publishing. They are also members with the Performing Rights Organizations, otherwise known as PRO. A PRO represents songwriters and publishers, and collect the money internationally, so they can get paid when the musical work is used publicly. The next part is the recording. This is the part that we actually can listen to. On the recording, we have the artist, producer and performers. And by performers, we mean musicians, vocalists or anyone that makes a contribution that we can hear on the recording. The recording is either self-released or released by a label. In our example, it's universal. So it's the same company representing both the musical work and the recording side. This is because some music companies have both a publishing and a label side, but it can also be different companies. Everyone who makes a contribution on a recording can get paid when it's used. To get paid for your contribution, you need to be a member of a performing rights organization. In the UK, that would be PPL. In the USA, it would be Sound Exchange. In our example with Dancing Queen, it's the Swedish organization Sami. So, we have explained how to identify which side of the song you're represented on, the musical work side or the recording side, or both. To ensure that you are correctly linked to your musical works and recordings, the music industry uses identifiers. This is done because many people and songs have same names, and it's impossible to tell them apart with just letters. There are five identifiers that identify creators, musical works and recordings. In order to get credited and paid as a music creator, you must know about the relevant identifiers. Even if you're represented by a publisher, manager or label, it's important that you know this basic information. Every songwriter needs to have an IPI, Interested Parties Information. This is the unique ID that identifies you as an individual. 
An IPI is equivalent to your unique social security number. If you don't have it, it's like going to the bank without a credit card and social security number and think you can withdraw cash. All songwriters and publishers need to have an IPI. If you don't have one, you can get it from a PRO organization. When songwriters create a musical work, the actual musical work also need an identifier. This is called ISWC, International Standard Work Code. An ISWC will be assigned when you or your publisher register a new musical work to a PRO organization. All involved songwriters and their IPIs need to be linked to the correct musical work and the ISWC. Otherwise, the music industry won't know what you have written. All recordings need an identifier too, and this is called ISRC, an International Standard Recording Code. If you work with a label, they will assign it for you. But if you self-release, you can get one from the aggregator that helps you release the music or from our app Session Studio. More about that later. All the musicians, performers and contributors to a recording also need an identifier. It's called IPN, an international performance number. And you get that from your performing rights organization. In the US, they don't often use the IPN identifier, but instead use the fifth identifier called ISNI, International Standard Name Identifier. The ISNI is an ID that links your name and the other IDs together. So, it's really important to remember, if you're a songwriter, you need to know your IPI and ISNI. If you're a performer, you need to know your IPN and ISNI. If you're both, you need to keep track of all of them. Going back to our example Dancing Queen, let's look at all the IDs that are assigned to this song. In a perfect world, this is what it would look like. There are four IPIs on Dancing Queen. The songwriters are Benny, Björn and Stieg. They also have a publisher, Universal Music Publisher. There should be own and only one ISWC for every musical work. Dancing Queen was actually ISWC number one, the first musical work ever with an ISWC. Many times musical works get more than one ISWC and this creates big problems. To ensure that it's right, it's very important that all songwriters are connected to the work as they are writing with their IPI numbers as early as possible during the creation process. For the ISRC, there can be multiple versions. For example, there are thousands of covers of Dancing Queen. So we therefore need a unique ISRC for each one of the recordings. When the music is played out in the world, it's important that they only report on the correct ISRC and that we have the correct link to the underlying ISWC. But if we don't have the link to the ISRC, and if the ISRC is not linked to the performers, IPIs, ISNIs and other identifiers, the music industry doesn't know who to pay. Confused or bored? I'm not surprised. We're music creators, not data analysts or admin gurus. So this is why my company Session Studio exists. We want this to work for every music creator. We built Session Studio, a free app that makes the capture and management of all these essential IDs super easy, as well as providing you with a whole host of other useful tools for you as a songwriter and music creator. I think it's a complete game changer. You know, the fact that you can, in the studio, actually decide on who's doing what, what your roles are, everyone can agree it, you can propose things. Um, everything's managed, it's linked and verified with all the right associations that you are part of and to have that information that flows throughout the world in the correct order, it's just invaluable. It's cool that you can put the lyrics in there and you can actually, what we did the first day, we co-wrote the lyrics on the app. Like everybody was connected to the app and then you can see them putting in the lyrics in real time. Like you can see the cursor moving in different colors and you're like, oh, okay. And it's less awkward than um, having to look over somebody's shoulder as they're writing in their own notebook, you know? So like the co-creation part, that was really, that was an interesting experience. Logged in, put our names as credits, the lyrics, the track was automatically registered. So yeah, it's just, one thing you have to do before opening your Logic project 
And so having any sort of tech innovation in the music space that gives you more protection and allows you to focus on the music is a good thing, is a positive thing. So, how does Session Studio work? Simply sign up for free at sessionstudio.com or download the free mobile or desktop app. Input your IDs just one time. As a songwriter, this means you need to input your IPI number. If you're a performer, then you need to input your IPN number. Every time you write a song, use the app. Session Studio has useful songwriting tools and it helps keep an audit trail of all your work. Whenever you record a track, simply open the song on the Session Studio desktop app and just check in using Session's QR code scanner. This ensures you and every contributor and their unique ID is attributed to the recording. Session Studio is integrated with all major DAWs, including Pro Tools, Logic and Ableton. You just need to ask whoever is managing the production to download the free Session Studio desktop app. You can create share links of your audio or final mixes and set them to private or to be downloadable. You can also release directly to your label or to SoundCloud with all the vital song information included. Make sure when you make music, you always get credited and paid. Download Session Studio for free at sessionstudio.com. Good luck and I'm really looking forward to hear your songs on the charts in the future.